Thanks for tuning in to No Wine in No Time. I'm your host Dave and today we're going to talk about a region that we intended to visit in 2022, but due to the ongoing COVID saga, our plans were delayed. And that's a place called Campania, Italy. Now in Campania, we often talk about DOCG level wines. And in Campania, there's four. The first one is Fiano da Avellino. Then we have Greco de Tufo. Then we have Alianico del Toborno. The one we want to focus on in this video is one called Tarazzi. And in my opinion, it is the most significant appellation in all of Campania, Italy. I apologize to the people who love the others, but Tarazzi is one of the few wines that compete with Italy's finest quality and most epic wines in the entire country. And that's wines like Barolo from Piemonte and also Brunello di Montalcino from Tuscany. This wine in vertical tastings from the 1930s show that this grape and this wine and this place can produce wines that can compete on a world scale with really exceptional quality and long-lived ageability. So where exactly is Tarazzi? So if we went to Campania and we looked at Naples, Italy, and we went about 30 miles northeast of Naples, Italy, we would find the small hamlet of Tarazzi. And in Tarazzi, there's just a little under a thousand acres of grapevines in that area. So a very, very small region. But this is an area where you actually have the climate, the soil, and the grape come together in utopian perfection. So let's talk about what makes this region so special. First off in Tarazi, we focus on a black skin, thick skin wine grape called Alianico. And No Wine in No Time has videos specifically on Alianico. So if you want to learn more about that, go and check that out. So Alianico is the king grape in Tarazi, and it's because it produces a very full bodied, very tannic wine. Now, according to DOCG laws in this area, the wine blends have to be at a minimum of 85% Alianico. We can blend some other grapes in there, grapes like Barbera or Sangiovese or Pedroso, but they cannot exceed 15%. Most Tarazis are 100% Alianico, but they don't have to be. So Alianico is the grape. The soil type in this area is very special and it's because of one volcano that's close to that area and that's Mount Vesuvius. Because Mount Vesuvius has been spewing volcanic soil and ash into this area for thousands of years, we have a blend of calcareous marl, we have limestone, and we also have that beautiful volcanic soil. What that does is that adds to the quality of the grape and a little bit of a spicy type of persona. Now, Alianico is grown in the foothills of the mountains and it excels at about 1,200 to almost 2,000 feet in elevation. And the climate here is perfect for growing these grapes. So we talked about the grape we talked about the soil, we talked about the climate, and what makes this wine so special. Now let's get back into those DOCG level laws. So when we look at DOCG level laws for Tarazi, it states that this wine has to be aged a minimum of three years before it can be sold. One of those years must be in oak. Then we talk about a Tarazi Reserva, and Tarazi Reserva has to spend a minimum of four years in aging and a minimum of 18 months in oak. So that's a lot of information, but what I'm trying to build a case for is just how mature this wine is and how it really is a beautiful performer on the world stage. So I'm sure at this point you're thinking, Dave, let's go ahead and taste this wine 
So the next time I go into one of my local wine stores, I'll know what I'm getting into before I pick that Tarazi off the shelf. So this particular wine we have today is from Antica Erpinia. And that basically means ancient Erpinia, which is the traditional name for the area in or around Tarazi. This is just a Tarazi DOCG, not a Tarazi Reserva. So when we look at the wine, the first thing that we notice is it's very dark in its color. We can barely see through the wine at all. It's kind of a uh, somewhere between a ruby and a garnet. So very beautiful. If we swirl to liberate the aromas, the first thing that comes out of the glass, it's like we just took a sniff of fresh-baked blueberry cobbler. There's a little bit of biscuit in there coming from the oak. There's a little bit of that beautiful dark fruit aroma. And we even catch a little bit of spiciness, almost a little bit of a peppery type of aroma off the wine. Let's go ahead and taste it. So when this particular Tarazi passes the palate, the first thing we're greeted with is these very dark fruits, kind of reminiscent of almost like, um, um, kind of like a blackberry compote, a little bit of plum, almost kind of bordering on cherry. So some very dark fruits. Then mid palate, we feel that beautiful lift of acidity from a very dry wine like this one is. And on the back side of the palate, we start to feel those tannins build. We start to feel that grip of tannins across the palate. And we get a little bit of that kind of almost furry feeling on the palate. So because of that, we know a wine like this will age for quite a long time. It has the acidic structure. It has the tannins to support it. And because it's such a tannic wine, let's start to think about type of foods that this would pair with. With this, we want to go with hearty type of foods. While you could potentially pair it with a tomato type sauce, which Campania is famous for, and I always say if it grows together, it goes together, it might be overmatched unless we add some, some beef, almost like a bolognese uh, type of uh, cuisine. But when I think about this, I want to pair it with grilled meats. Very, very good with steaks on the grill heartier fare. I think it's absolutely perfect with that. So I'm going to get back and enjoy just a little bit more of this Tarazi and I ask that you tune in next time because soon you'll know wine in no time. Mm -hmm.